Good night, everyone. It is my supreme privilege again to be here tonight. I like the sound of the mic. And we're going to have a wonderful time in Jesus' name. We say praise God for that. I have gotten reports from all over the world on how people are enjoying the message. They say it's unique. It is biblical. It is empowered by the power of the Holy Ghost. And we are just delighted to be here. Okay? At this first ever online Caribbean Religious Liberty Association Revival and Festival. I am so glad to be chosen by God. I understand. And the topic tonight deals with madness. Deals with sentence. All right? Psychotica and courage. We shall define both of those terms today because tonight. Because what is actually happening is that when you look at the, the word of God and look at Revelation and look at all you know when Saul became Paul? Hey, let me pray. Father, bless us tonight and give us your grace. Oh Lord, we thank you. Wash us in your blood. Forgive me, forgive us, oh God, where we have gone wrong. And may we, oh loving Father, march on to the kingdom. We see the world is in desperation. The world desperately needs you, Father. The world needs to have an appetite for the gospel, an appetite for righteousness. So bless me at this, to this end, and may we all have a great time, and may many people around the world, in all the continents looking on, oh God, at different times, may they surrender all to you. This be our prayer in Jesus' name. I want to tell you something tonight. When God makes a promise, he keeps the promise. And I want, I want you to, uh, the, the, those of us who are the technical people, everybody in here tonight, to say amen to that. When God makes a promise, uh, uh, he keeps the promise. Uh, all right? Whatever he tells you to do, if he says he's going to give you a job, God will give you the job. And that is why in Matthew chapter 6, uh, we read, uh, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, uh, and all these things uh, will be added unto you. I say power in the name of Jesus. Uh, now, I believe in miracles. For those of you who have never heard me preach before, in terms of this, when I was 14 years old, I, was, uh, I should have been raped and killed by a very muscular Trinidadian structured Arnold Schwarzenegger. One night I was coming from a, a youth crusade in Stanmore Avenue Church. And a guy who said he wanted to give his heart to God, you know, <laughs> uh, he was gay and I didn't know he was gay. He used to drop him all. It was a Pathfinder crusade. You said, Kevin, you said drop him all of us. But that night, I remember it well. I have to remember it well. I was traumatized. I actually didn't know what was happening. But, and I was, I, brought, I was brought up very sheltered, you know. I mean, I could tell you this. The first time I hugged a young lady was when I was in my late 20s. So I grew up innocent in one room in Katie's Road. So it, 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 it was by my, my father, the Hoshams. It was, a, I mean, a traumatic experience for me. And when we're going around the savannah, that's why I believe in angels. And I believe in miracles because I have been rescued time and time again by the power of Almighty God. All right, this guy was psychotic. He was out of touch with reality. I think he was paranoid. If you please, he was narcissistic. He was self-absorbed. And I recall that he told me, Let, let's go in the savannah. At that time, at that time, I'm telling you, that's over 50 years ago. The savannah had no lights or something. And by general, I've been there to get to where you have... Uh, the, 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 the big, um, you know, auditorium there, the Napa auditorium there. There was a lot of clump of grasses there. I was in danger and I didn't know. You know, God knows the past. And God knows the present. Uh, and God knows the future. I believe in God. I believe in miracles. And, and you know, he told me, like, like, go inside the savannah. I want to have a discussion with you. So I didn't know anything about homosexuality and bisexuality and all those things. So I told the guy, I said, my mother told me I must never go in the dark with strangers. To tell you I was brought up, she didn't tell me a word about those things. I grew up sheltered. And so when they grew up sheltered, parents could be in danger. Huh? So I was in danger there. And then he started to hold my hand. He made some remarks. I would not repeat them. It's not good for your ears. And that time, the more you were speaking, he was speaking in an unknown tongue to me. Because I grew up very sheltered. Then he started to squeeze my hand and his nails were digging into my flesh. And then he said, um, you see you, I will fix you tonight. 
I'll destroy you tonight. Those were the exact words of this homosexual rapist. Brother Kuma, I didn't even know what rape was all about. And, be, and definitely between a male and a male. I mean, that was like Sodom to me. I couldn't understand it at all. You know, I prayed to God. And I didn't pray, Lord, because he was upset when I was praying, Lord. He said, you think I come to get baptized? I come to join the Seventh-day Adventist Church. He said, no, I look at you all the time. Now, I wondered what he was looking at. Because I am weighing basically 151 pounds. And at that time, I was weighing 47 pounds. So I wondered what he was really looking at. I mean, I was like an Ethiopian, Somalian, Biafran, if you please, there. I, I don't know what he was looking at. And he told me, I look at you a long time at the church. You think I'm coming up to the altar? You, you are the youth preacher. Is you I coming after? Is you I was thirsting after? And I have you tonight. He said, I have you tonight. Lord, have mercy. Well, the next thing you know, he pulling me and I pulling away. And all of a sudden, I look north, I look south, I look east, and I look west. And there was nobody whatsoever. And I pulled away. All of a sudden, I looked across the savannah there. The, the, the big road there, where there's two ways. Now, that time was one way. I looked across by Cadiz Road Corner, and I, see a, I saw a being materialize. Ladies and gentlemen, I kid you not. I'm talking about nobody around. And then I told the guy, uh, I say, God had sent an angel to protect me. That's what I told him. You see, I was sure because that guy wasn't walking up the road. He just appeared. I mean, that's a unique experience as like in the movies. The guy just appeared. And I told him God had sent somebody to rescue me. So I crossed the road. I never saw that guy before. And I never saw that guy after. And I'm convinced it was an angel of the Lord that encamped around me that night. That word encamp means uh, to pitch a tent, uh, uh, to dwell, uh, to be close to somebody. Encamping, pitching a camp, pitching a tent, uh, all right? Making sure of the abiding presence uh, of the Holy Ghost. Uh, so I was saved from being raped and killed at the age of 14. So I know whom I believe. And I know he's able to deliver us. Uh, he that dwelleth in the secret place uh, of the Most High shall abide, Psalm 91, in the shadow of the Almighty. I will see of the Lord is my refuge and my fortress. Uh, my God in him will I trust. Uh, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. Uh, he shall cover thee with his feathers uh, and under his wings shall not trust. Uh, his truth shall be like shield and buckler. And here the text now. And this text revolves around Armageddon. Huh? It's an eschatological text. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it should not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. As I say every night, power in the name of Jesus. Hope in the name of Jesus. Protection in the name of Jesus. Liberation. And as a famous religious liberty text in John 8, 32, He whom the Son hath set free is free indeed. So, I am alive, and I praise God for that. Uh, and you are alive. Let me tell you something. You might have crossed the road one day, and the maxi taxi driver was going to hit you. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Lord have mercy, the driver mass brakes, and you say the driver could drive. Up to now, the driver doing more the maxi taxi stop. It's the angels uh, who press, who stop the maxi. Angels have that ability. Did I hear you say hallelujah? So let's put our trust in God. God knows what he is doing. Uh, and God has perfect timing. Uh, God knows when to stop the maxi. He knows how to stop high tide and low tide. That is God. Uh, examples of courage in the good book. Uh, so it takes uh, Holy Ghost power. You know the Bible has a text that says, The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. When you examine that word for fool, you will see it has a bit of insanity in it. Uh, it will have a bit of paranoid behavior in it. Uh, that is the issue there. So examples of courage. Peter, all right? You see the cock, the cock there? Well, you know, <laughs> Christ told him before the cock could try, so he'll deny me. All right? And that's exactly what happened. Before the cock crows, you are going to deny me. And that same Peter was converted by the power of God. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, You shall receive power, the Holy Ghost. You know, after which the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses, you know, of me both in Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. That's Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 2, all right, from verses 1 to 4. What you see there, what you see there is that uh, they were in, one, in the upper room in one accord, praising God, uh, and the Holy Ghost came upon them. Uh, and Peter was a cursing fisherman. Uh, Peter drew a knife in the garden of Gethsemane to knock down 
All right, the Nong Dong, uh, the soldiers there who tried to arrest Christ. Uh, you know, they said the soldiers were, were stunned when Christ said, uh, I am he. Who are you looking for? Don't need to be the disciples. Uh, I am the one. Uh, they can't save mankind. Uh, if you crucify them, uh, they can't save mankind. Uh, it, let me tell you something, folks, uh, and all around the world viewing, uh, uh, it takes uh, a, the sinless one uh, to save the sinner. And that's why I thank God for Jesus Christ. Uh, so he preached an amazing sermon. Uh, several people in several languages uh, heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, they heard in their own tongue. Uh, there was no translator. This was not the United Nations headquarters. Uh, this was the Holy Ghost Pentecostal headquarters. Uh, and everybody heard in their own language. Uh, and the good book says, uh, after preach, uh, Peter preached uh, on a Jesus that lived upon this earth. Uh, and walk for over 27 years uh, and cause the blind to see and cause the deaf to hear and cause the crippled to walk. Uh, Jesus Christ, uh, who brought Lazarus from the grave uh, and proclaimed, I am the resurrection and the life. Uh, he that believeth in me, though you were dead, yet shall he live. Uh, Peter preached a masterclass sermon. Uh, he was filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something uh, it's not the shape of your nose uh, or the texture of your hair that determines, uh, uh, determines your power. What determines your power is not your class, it's not your degrees, uh, it's not your status in society. What determines, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what determines uh, uh, your power is when you surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, that is what brings power to you. That is what brings change. Uh, that is what brings transformation. Uh, that is what brings sanctification. Uh, uh, when you yield yourself to the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, Acts chapter 2 verses 37 and 38. All right, it says, uh, Now... When they heard this, uh, they were pricked in their heart. What were they hearing? Uh, the Cappadocians uh, and the Arabians uh, and the Cretans uh, and the Libyans. Uh, Libya is mentioned in Acts chapter 2. When they heard uh, the power, the Pamphylians and the Phrygians, uh, when all those languages uh, and nationalities uh, heard the power of God, uh, they heard in their own language uh, uh, Peter preaching uh, about a gospel, uh, about a savior who was dead uh, but now is alive forevermore. He was dead. Uh, he was crucified. Uh, he was dead. Uh, oh, and thank God he's not in the grave anymore. He is alive. I say, our Jesus is alive. Praise God for that. When they heard him deliver this sermon, the cursing fisherman, the guy who himself was almost stark mad as he tried to get the fish out. When the fish gave him trouble, he exuded and he verbalized expletives. But this Peter now is a changed man. This Peter is washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. This Peter is fearless. He has courage. When they heard this, that's the sermon. That's the gospel by a man infused uh, and imbued and injected uh, with the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, when they heard this, uh, they were pricked in their heart. Uh, that means they were stimulated. Uh, they, 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 they got a power, uh, an electrical release inside their heart. Uh, uh, they were stunned in their heart. Uh, they were converted. Uh, they were convicted. Uh, let me say this to you. I know murderers who have been converted by the power of Jesus Christ. Uh, during the lockdown in March and April, I work with someone, have mercy, who was in jail in America, accused and convicted of murder. But let me tell you something right now. That guy has surrendered his life to Jesus Christ. That guy, uh, there is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Would he be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood. There is hope in the blood. There is grace in the blood. I'm talking about 2020, this year, in the early part of the lockdown, Brother Stewart, when the rehab center manager and myself uh, went down to Maruga and we witnessed a guy on seven different occasions. Uh, uh, and when we went there with the guy, I tell you, that guy surrendered uh, after seven sessions. Uh, uh, he was pricked in his heart. Uh, uh, the, the Holy Ghost came upon him uh, uh, and shocked him. Uh, and he was traumatized at one time. Uh, he felt it was too good to be true that Jesus tried to change your heart. Uh, uh, you see... The psychiatrists uh, and the psychologists uh, believe in behavior modification. We believe in behavior transformation. Uh, said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Now hold a minute here. When the Spirit of God and those looking all around the world, uh, when the Spirit of God uh, has come upon you and you are touched, you are stung in your heart, uh, all right? And that heart really means mine. Uh, you experience a change of mind. Uh, your appetite changes. Uh, your thirst changes. Uh, 
Uh, what you like changes. Uh, in fact, what you like before, you didn't do like them again. Uh, the drinking, uh, the smoking, uh, the killing, the criminality, the abortion, uh, the pornography. You don't like it anymore because there's a new power in your heart. Uh, I say praise God for that. Uh. So don't repeat, oh, men and brethren, what shall we do? Now, this is the preacher not telling them what to do. These are the men so convicted, all right? So influenced, so persuaded that they're asking men and brethren, what shall we do to be saved? What did Peter tell them? Let's move on to verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and each shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, there are two words for repentance. All right, two words. One is sorrow for sin. That is meta melomai in the Greek. That is sorrow for sin. I was talking to a police officer not too long ago. He said there were some guys who had robbed some people and beat them up. And they got away in, the, in St. Vincent Street there. They got away. If the walls could talk, have mercy. They got away. But God is taking a record. Huh? You're, there, you have a lawyer today who could lie and get you off. But there's a lawyer upstairs there. Let me tell you something. You can't lie. He knows the truth. He knows what you're going to do before you do it. Peter said, then repent and be baptized. Repent. That's metanoia. That is, uh, there are two words there. In the one word, it's a compound word. You have meta, which means change. And you have noia, which means mind. All right. Uh, that is what you have there. Repent. Go, let's go back to the next section before that one. Uh, repent. Have mercy. And be baptized, every one of you. All right? For the remission of your sins. Uh, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, now, I have to go into this text tonight. Uh, metanoia. Let me tell you what metanoia is. Uh, Metamelomai is staying here. And the police told me. He heard the guy say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So he asked the guy, what are you sorry about? He said, we're sorry we got caught. They weren't sorry for what they did. They didn't have a heart change. They didn't have sympathy or empathy. They were sorry, all right, that they got caught. And lots of people are like that. But metanoia is a different thing. Meta means change, as in metamorphosis. Caterpillar, lava, pupa, whoosh, butterfly flying away. You ever saw that from a pupa? It's a beautiful sight. It's a beautiful sight. That's the change, change in structure, change in thinking, change in behavior, change in attitude, change in decision making, change in character. That's the power of the Holy Ghost coming upon you. So what is metanoia? Watch me here right now. Watch me here right now. You're going down the road. All right? You're going down into a simple... And by the way, let me tell you this right now. Every day we live, there is no what you call stasis. It's either... We, let us say this is the devil here, and this is Jesus across here. All right? You either get closer to Jesus every day, or you get closer to the devil. There is no neutral ground. That's why it says no man can serve two masters. All right? So what is metanoia? All right? Let's say Jesus is there. All right? And you are here. And the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And you hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you hear a song like, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. All right? So it doesn't matter you're staying here and you're feeling sorry and you're crying for the sin. We're not experiencing change. Metanoia means you're going down a road. All right? You're going down the road and getting closer to Satan. And then like on the road to Damascus, you are struck by the lightning of the power of the Holy Ghost there. And what do you think happens? You make a complete turn around. At 360 degrees, uh, and you're moving away, and you're happy to move away. They say, men and brethren, what shall we do to be saved? Uh, you want to know what to do to be saved. Uh, you're surrendered. Uh, you're in a modality right now uh, where you have a thirst uh, for Jesus. Uh, you want to be washed in his blood. Uh, you want to be saved. Uh, you want to go to heaven. Uh, you want to sacrifice for Jesus Christ. Uh, so you're getting closer to Satan. You're drinking and you're smoking and everything else and premarital sex. Uh, and you're all there. And then the light from God's glory strikes you. And what happens? Uh, you turn around uh, and you move in a new direction. Uh. So repentance then means moving in a new direction. Uh. Moving in the corridors of the Holy Ghost. Uh, that is what it means. Uh, meta. Noia. All right? You're going. You're going to Jesus. Uh. You're getting further from the devil and you're going to Jesus there. And by the way, you're happy to go. Have mercy. God is a good God. Uh. Did I hear you say Hallelujah. Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ uh, for remission of sins uh, and he shall receive the gift uh, of the Holy Ghost. Uh, we move on, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so we have to deal with psychotica tonight uh, and that power, that power that Peter got uh, that changed him from an uncouth, rude uh, piece of stupidity protoplasm 
All right? He has uh, the power of God right now. Uh, and that power was promised in Acts chapter 1. You see, God gives his promises. Uh, God keeps his promises. Uh, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And he shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Let's move on. God is an awesome God. God is talking to us. All right. God knows what he is doing. God is a tremendous God. Well, let me show you this right now. All right. On the right hand side, my right, your left. Good. What you seeing there? What are you seeing there? You see a guy called Momtaz Kadri. Now I want to show you the issue of liberty. This took place in 2011. In the middle is a guy who's dead now. Mumtaz Kadri on the right, my right, was, uh, all right, he was the assassin. He was from the Royal Pakistan Elite Force, uh, and he killed the guy in the middle. He was the bodyguard. Have so much religious liberty tonight. Uh, now in Pakistan, among those extremists, uh, they don't believe in Article 10 of the 1948. Uh, 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 Article 18, uh, the 1948 Declaration of Human Rights. They don't believe uh, you have uh, the right to change a religion. Uh. They don't believe you have a right to choose a religion. Uh. Once you're Islamic uh, uh, and you change your religion, you're an infidel, and the person who helps you to change religion is also infidel. Uh. And according to the Quran, uh, that is a crime punishable by death. Now, who is that girl you see smiling there? Her name is Aisha Bibi. All right, you, you get a name there? She was in jail. Now, this case uh, attracted the United Nations. Uh, it attracted international attention. Asia Bibi, all right, was accused of insulting the Prophet Muhammad. Now, it is said, I don't know how true, that in 1990, when Abu Bakr, you know, sought to overthrow the government, and he was successful for a few days, uh, it is said he wanted to introduce Sharia law. I don't know how true. In this plural society, he would have had a great difficulty but I went home that Friday evening and whatever evening it was, and I'm telling you, I recall seeing him uh, taking over the station. Aisha Bibi was a Muslim, but she got converted to Christianity. And so her workers accused her of blaspheming the name of the prophet by exalting Jesus. She went to jail. She had a lot of courage. You know? When you face psychotic people who are mad, who are out of touch with reality, who hallucinate, who engage in projection, when you have that kind of power, uh, let me tell you something, uh, you, uh, you attract enemies, uh, you attract hatred, uh, you attract persecution. What did George Orwell say? The further society drifts from the truth, the more it hates those who speak it. Up to the day I heard it on 95.5. So Asia Bibi was in jail. Salman Tassir who was a Muslim, and the mayor of Punjab province decided that he would identify with her. I tell people, that's why I say, mustn't say who saved and lost. Let God determine that. I would say that that Muslim guy, that Islamic believer, believer in Muhammad, went to defend the Christian girl, went to the jail in the Punjab province in Pakistan, uh, and we come to the cricket just now, to give her hope uh, and to negotiate with her. Uh-huh. His bodyguard is what you call a member of the Royal Elite Pakistani Force. Went with him. And before he entered, all right, before he entered the, the, the jail, he took out his gun and he pumped 28 bullets in him. The guy died immediately. So Mumtaz Kadri, the assassin, immediately in Pakistan, Mumtaz Kadri became a hero. He became a hero because he killed a man giving support to a Christian girl. What was the charge against her? The charge against her was that she insulted the Prophet Muhammad and was now serving Jesus Christ. Those who follow cricket, that person should not be a problem for you. Now on the screen. That's the map of Pakistan there, all right? That is Imran Khan. He tormented the West Indies batsmen. Well, some other people tormented them these days too. But he used to torment. He was a great all-rounder, Imran Khan. Imran Khan became, and he still is, uh, the water. He is in charge of Pakistan. He's the president of Pakistan. Now, Pakistan has a history of its leaders being assassinated, uh, just like Iran. It's a kind of philosophy. It's a kind of culture there. And when he got in to power, the appeal court was missing. And the appeal court says uh, that Asia Bibi should be released. Instantly, the Islamic extremists pass a death sentence 
on three of the appeal court judges. That means all. It's a tribunal, so it's three of them. Immediately, they pass a death sentence on him. Let me tell you something. Don't, don't think it's he alone getting death sentence, you know. There's coming a time, brethren. The Bible says in Revelation 12, 17, the dragon is wrought with a woman and goes to make war with the remnant of a seed which keeps the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. In other words, in the last days, Armageddon is not a battle between Russia and America, not a battle between North and South or East and West, not a battle between Israel all right, and the West and England and Syria and Russia and China, as some people say. I have listened to some preachers, all right, on some evangelical stations, uh, and they see Armageddon uh, as a physical war, as a military war. Let me tell you something. Uh, on the authority of the word of God tonight, uh, as a student, uh, a profound student of Bible prophecy, let me tell you something right now. Armageddon will be a battle between those with the seal of God and those with the mark of the beast. Let me boil it down. Let me reduce that. Uh, it will be a battle between those uh, who keep the commandments of God and those who break the commandments of God, those who believe that the law of God is holy, it is righteous. When Jesus says, think not I'm come to destroy the law, the prophets, I am not come to destroy, I'm come to fulfill. It's between law keepers and law breakers. That is the issue, my dear friends, of Armageddon. Those and a death threat will be passed upon all of us who hold on to God and hold on to the Sabbath and hold on to the Bible and hold on to the Word and hold on to the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost is holding on to us. That is what is happening, ladies and gentlemen. But I want to tell you that when they are about to kill us, as the Armageddon, battle of Armageddon, draws to a close. And by the way, the battle of Armageddon will be a universal battle. It will be fought in America. It will be fought, my dear friends, in Russia. It will be fought in South America. It will be fought everywhere. The battle of Armageddon will be fought everywhere. And, and the death sentence will be passed. It will be a universal death sentence. But I praise God. I praise God, my dear friends, as they're about to kill us. The Bible says that at that time, Michael shall stand for his people. And I say praise God for that. Come on, shout amen. Michael will stand for his people. He will stand, my dear friends, in the morning. He will stand in the evening. He will stand at sunset. He will stand at sunrise. Michael will stand for his people. Praise God for that. Numbers 30, 30 to 32. There was an Old Testament Armageddon there. All right. Uh, they wanted to do something and inherit the land of Canaan. All right. Uh, and, and they had 12 spies. Uh, and 10 of them reported uh, that, that there's no way we could overcome that land. Uh, there were the giants, the sons of Anak. Uh, and here what happened. Uh, and they made a big scene in a kind of wood for square climate there. Yeah. That is no sense. Uh, God had told them, uh, you will conquer the land. Uh, where you walk, you shall inherit. Uh, let me say this to you. When God makes a promise to you, hello there. You exercise faith in God that when God makes a promise, God keeps his promises. You exercise faith in God. Caleb and Joshua, the only two spies, the only, one, the only, only two ones who enter the promised land. And Caleb tell the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once. You see, we don't have to understand how God will work the miracle, you know. We just have to trust God. Are you hearing me, preaching? And all those all over the world, whether you're Baptist or Catholic or Hindu or Muslim, you just have to trust God because God knows what he is doing. God knows the past. God knows the present. And God knows the future. And God has power to do what he wants, when he wants, wherever he wants. That is the awesome God. The difference between the ten spies and Caleb and Joshua, just two, is that they were pusillanimous. They had cockroach-sized head faith in God. But, but, my dear friends, uh, Caleb and Joshua had extreme faith in God. Uh, could I tell you something? Now is the time to exercise extreme faith in God. I was in Cyprus, and I'd never forget this. Never forget this. Uh, I was in Cyprus, and I met a guy. This guy is a missionary. He goes to areas where there's Sharia law. Sometimes he doesn't have a visa. And I, I, I was blessed. I tell you, I was there. I met the guy. Pastor Trotman was there. Wesley Lindy from Guyana was there. Dr. Osain from the University of the Southern Caribbean, the best university in the Caribbean. Let me tell you something. He was there. And I heard that guy on Sabbath morning give a story. And I know, but let me tell you something. God could finish this work tonight. God could finish this work tomorrow. But he's given people a chance to accept him and given us a chance to be, continue to be ambassadors for him. 
So I thank God for the privilege. Hello, it's a privilege to be called by God. Did I hear you say hallelujah, Patrick? All over the world, watching on your computers and phones and what have you there. It's a privilege to be called by God. It's a privilege to be appointed by God to work in his vineyard, to dress it, to keep it, and to expand the vineyard. It is a privilege to receive the power of the Holy Ghost. It's a privilege, my dear friends, to read the word of God. It's a privilege to be a missionary. It's a privilege to be described as an angel in Revelation 14, 6 and 7. Uh, that John saw flying in the midst of heaven with the everlasting gospel uh, and preaching to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people saying with a loud voice fear God and give glory to him uh, for the hour of his judgment is come uh, and worship him uh, that made the heavens and the earth and the seas uh, and the fountains of waters uh, power in the blood and power in the word uh, power in the promises uh, power by the Holy Spirit uh, dunamis power exousia power exousia power power of authority and the dunamis is liquid uh, naked power that you find in dynamite uh, that's the power of almighty God uh, let us go up at once uh, and possess it uh, I tell the church in five rivers tonight uh, and over the, all over the world uh, let us go from street to street uh, until the last street uh, we are able to overcome it uh, let us go up at once uh, let us call our neighbors come on uh, let us give out the trucks uh, let us invite them to the meetings uh, let us share our computers with them uh, so they could hear the everlasting gospel uh, about a Jesus uh, who died for us uh, who was buried for us uh, and is now resurrected uh, and he's ascended up into heaven uh, sitting down at the right hand of God the Father begging for us uh, telling his father Save thy people, save thy people in New York, save thy people in Nigeria, save thy people uh, in Rio de Janeiro, save thy people, save thy people, oh God. Uh, and when they ask why the accuser says, How, how they are sinners, uh, they used to drink the alcohol, uh, they were prostitutes, uh, they were killers, how to save them? Uh, and he says, Father, my blood, uh, my blood uh, that I shed on Calvary's cross for them, uh, I died uh, so that they might live, uh, I died uh, so to receive the grace uh, of Jesus Christ. I died uh, so they could be happy because happy are those people whose God is the Lord, the Bible says. Uh, let us move on. Uh, I found through which we have gone to search it. Uh, it's a land. Watch it now. Watch it now. You English majors, uh, you know, you have simile. You say, okay, the grass is like a carpet. But metaphor is where you say the grass, the carpet of grass. You knock off as and like. That's metaphor. But a personification is when you give an inanimate object without a heart and a mouth, human personal characteristics. That's called personification. This is Pastor Professor Dutton talking to you right now. Hear what he said. The land eat it up the inhabitants. You ever saw the land eating up anybody? That's a figure of speech. Are you hearing me, Brother Ringer? That is a figure of speech. It meant that there were dead bodies all over the land. All right? You couldn't be alive unless you followed uh, the status quo, unless you followed the crowd. You couldn't be alive. Uh, all right, there were cannibals in the land. Uh, you had more dead bodies, uh, more corpses there than you had grass, my dear friends. Uh, they gave the land uh, was a cruel land. Uh, the land was uh, was barbaric, uh, something like some parts of Trinidad. I'm telling you, uh, barbaric. Uh, I read in Trinidad, in South Trinidad, where the, the, an ex fire officer. They, uh, they, they kidnapped him and they shot him and they cut off two of his fingers. Lord have mercy. There's a new thing now. It happened in Kokori and happening recently again. Where they found that old man burnt to death. You know what they found out? They shot and killed him first and then they burnt him after. That is psychotic behavior. That is extreme insanity. Those fellas are schizos, if you please. There. The power of the devil is inside of them. They brought an evil report to the land, uh, which they said, the land eat it up the inhabitants thereof. Uh, and all the people that saw, uh, we saw in it, uh, are men of great stature. They're taller than us. Uh, they're stronger than us. Uh, they're bigger than us. Uh, they are giants. Uh, we are dwarfs. Uh, there's no way. Let's, let's move on, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but let me tell you something. Uh, the sons of Enoch were the Old Testament. Uh, uh, the ISIS terrorists. Uh, that's what they were uh, in the Old Testament. Uh, they used to behead people like I ISIS does in these days, in recent times. Uh, the sons of Enoch were the Old Testament ISIS terrorists. Uh, they, they, those guys were psychotic. Uh, those guys were burned up inside of them uh, with the power of Satan. Uh, they drank blood for breakfast uh, and drank blood for lunch uh, and drank blood uh, for supper. Those guys, my dear friends, were evil guys. Uh, under the dictates uh, of the evil one. Uh, I have a book, uh, Why Do Kids Kill? 
And they're talking about the guys drinking the blood uh, and watching the movies uh, uh, and cutting off the tongues of, of who supposed to be their friends uh, at their age range. Uh, this is a barbaric world. Uh, what did Paul tell Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3? In the last days, perilous times shall come. And I want to say, I want to change shall to have. Uh, perilous times uh, have come. Lord have mercy. Let's move on. Uh, Numbers 13 33. Hear this now. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Enoch, uh, which come of the giants. Uh, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. Uh, and so we were in their sight. Uh, now, if you see yourself as a grasshopper, that's one thing. But to tell folks uh, how you see, how the others see you, that means, brethren, uh, how we think of ourselves, uh, we think others think about us that way. We were grasshoppers, uh, and so we were in their sight. You're not in their minds. What happened? You don't touch your water. You weren't in their minds. Uh, huh? So we were in their sight. Uh, you see, see, the ten spies uh, looked at the giants uh, and then looked at themselves. Uh, and they saw the giants uh, uh, up in the sky, men of great stature, and they saw themselves as dwarfs. Uh, but Caleb and Joshua looked at the giants uh, and then looked at Jesus Christ. And they saw the giants as dwarfs. Uh, hello there. When you're comparing God with anybody, no matter how strong, tall, Goliath, uh, and the David story, I'm telling you right now, uh, they will look as minuscule uh, because God has all the power. He's eternal. Uh, he's everlasting. Uh, that's why the Bible says, Fear God uh, and give glory to him uh, for the hour, for the time, uh, for the moment of his judgment is come. Uh, power in his name. Uh, great uh, uh, might in his name. Uh, the sons of Enoch with the Old Testament ISIS terrorists. Uh, that's who they were. That's why the earth was set to eat up the inhabitants. Uh, there was murder by day and murder by night. Uh, the men were committing murder in the day and in the night they dreamt about committing murder. That's the story there. But I want to tell you what is psychotic behavior. Why do I mention psychotic behavior? In the last days, uh, when the persecution, the final phase of Armageddon, when there's persecution, uh, men under the influence of the devil will display psychotic behavior ladies and gentlemen what is psychotic behavior what are some qualities of psychotic behavior number one is what narcissistic behavior you're obsessed with yourself you're not obsessed with god obsessed with your beauty obsessed with your power your physical power number two psychotic people are out of touch with reality well some of them in St. Anne's, they're bright too i was going St. Anne's, you know i go there every now and then i don't stay long I just go to minister. So they give me my treatment piece by piece. Lord have mercy. My treatment is missionary work. So I went there and two, two mad guys approached me. They said, Pastor, we know you. One of the fellas said, you know something? Give me $5. You know the next fella said? The next mad guy? The next mad guy says, don't give him. He mad, give me. Are, are, are you hearing me, Pratt that's him, Mr. Guitarist, where you all were all the time. Well, I went to Planet Mars. Listen, the guys, brother, told me, you don't give him Pastor Dottin, don't give him the $5, give me. He mad. You understand? There's a madman saying the next one mad. Because he won the money. There's a capacity for hatred and torture. Delusions of grandeur. There's a loss of control. Let me tell you something. There's a girl who was raped and killed by a group of boys, a rock group in California. They raped that girl. And after she was dead, have you heard about something called necrophilia? It's a big thing now in movies. It's having sex with the dead. They drank the alcohol. They smoked the ganja. They had a star of David on top of their left arm. And they had a chalice, a satanic chalice. And, and they, they did all of that in a place in California called San Luis Obispo County. The place of death. Let me say this to you. No wonder the Bible says, uh, the fool, the one out of touch with reality. The one, all right, who does no separate truth from error. The one who is guided by an unseen force. Uh, had said there is no God. Uh, delusions of grandeur. Some people see themselves as prime minister and presidents. Uh, and there's a loss of control. Uh, when you add all of that up, uh, and people using the drugs uh, and the ecstasy. And the alcohol together and the energy drinks. I uh, hope you don't charge me for calling the name energy and monster and shark and bull. Why do you have to call those things those names? Uh, all of those things are devouring barbaric creatures, if you please there. When you add all of that uh, and then people tell you, you see those people there? All the problems in the world, they are to blame. Uh, this Jesus thing, uh, they are to blame. Uh, if you get rid of them, if you get rid of them, then there'll be peace. Imagine telling me when Jesus comes the next time, Lucifer will be in charge. And Jesus will be his assistant. Lord God. God needs no assistance from anyone, especially Satan. 
And by the way, the Freemasons them don't believe, they don't believe that there's Satan. Huh? They say, we lie on Satan. He's still Lucifer. He's still a light bearer. Well, out of him comes quintessential darkness. Uh, I want to tell you tonight uh, that we must put our trust in God. We must have the courage to stand up against those with narcissistic behavior, obsessed with themselves, out of touch with reality, a capacity for hatred and torture, delusions of grandeur, and loss of control. I'll tell you about a, a, a psychotic family I met in Jamaica at the end of the message uh, and how they came to Jesus Christ uh, and were washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. Uh, it is no secret what our God can do, you know, what he has done for others, uh, he will do for us. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Let's move on quickly to the end of the program. Mob in Russia. These were Seventh-day Adventists who were Islamic people. They were Islamic. Uh, in 1997, 20, a mob of 20,000 people descended upon them, my dear friends. Uh, that is what happened to them. Uh, Ghazi Murat and his wife, they were burned to death, but the girl was seven months pregnant. Uh, and when they finished burnt, they burning the guy, the wife, they came to the wife. They said, you are seven months pregnant. You are Russian. Huh? You are another religion. But now you are joined the Seventh-day Adventist faith. You are serving Christ. That is wrong. That is wrong. You all people are bringing trouble in the land of Russia. Tatiana was his wife, seven months pregnant. They said, we are going to burn you and burn the child. But the girl had courage. You know, Nelson Mandela says, courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is the management and conquest of that fear. And that's why the Bible says, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Let me tell you something. Uh, cast all your cares upon him, because he cares for you. They brought the fire to her lips, and they told her, You can't now, and say, You don't believe in Jesus. Uh, she says, I was living a miserable life, uh, my husband and I. Uh, and then we met Jesus, and we got the peace that passed all understanding. Uh, she witnessed before they burnt her to death. Uh, and when they were burning her to death, uh, the baby came out. You know what they did? You know what they did, my dear friends? Uh, the umbilical cord was there. They burned the baby also. I mean, you could imagine uh, what people have suffered. Uh, they had the courage to stand up. Uh, they had the courage to say yes to Jesus. Uh, they had the courage to die for Jesus. Because I tell you, any cause worth living for is a cause worth dying for. Any cause whatsoever. We move on, my dear friends. Uh, we're coming close to the end. Uh, let me say this to you. There's alliance of evil taking place in the world. It's a loss of freedom. When church and state come together, you will have persecution. But let me say this to you right now. If you love Jesus Christ, if you are submitted to the power of the Holy Ghost, the power that came upon Peter, the power that came upon Christ when he brought Lazarus from the grave, the power, my dear friends, when Peter and John after Pentecost were walking by the temple and there's a man who never walked and they said, silver and gold, have we none? But such as we have, give, we, give it to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise, take up your bed and walk. Uh, let me say this to you right now. The same Jesus that pulled down the walls of Jericho is alive uh, and he has the same power. The same Jesus uh, that cut a highway through the Red Sea as Moses stretched forth his rod, uh, he has that power. He will always have that power and nobody can take away that power from him. Uh, when you have church and state, uh, my last text tonight comes from Exodus chapter 12. Uh, all of us uh, must be washed in the blood uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, power in his name. Uh, power in his word. Uh, power in the blood of Jesus Christ. The same Jesus Christ, of course, rots the turn to serpents. Let's read Exodus 12. God is telling Moses, there will come a pass over time. I am going to liberate you. As we discuss about religious liberty, it's only God to liberate us uh, from psychotic men, uh, from evil men, uh, from godless men. Uh, and the blood shall be to you for a token uh, upon the houses uh, where you are. Uh, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt. Uh, and that's why the book of Exodus is called Exodus. Uh, it's a moving away. It's an escape out of darkness uh, into light. Uh, they had a journey there. After over 400 years of slavery. They had a journey out there. And they couldn't liberate themselves. Uh, but they had to have the blood. Uh, it was a symbol uh, of the power of God. Uh, of the transforming power of God. Uh, they had the blood uh, as a mark of faith on the doorpost. Uh, you know, Pharaoh's house did have blood. Uh, and his firstborn died. Uh, as God had said it would happen. Uh, when God says it. I believe it and that settles it for me ladies and gentlemen I close off with this experience right now listen to me very carefully here it's very early still I was in Jamaica in the year 2014 new young boys here listen man I have to give you all some of my courage there you know I was in Jamaica I met a psychotic family a family who hated God they grew up you know loving God but they hated God I'm watching this fellow every night 
first night I preached in Jamaica there, in Hagley Park, was at Garrison area. You know the Garrison areas? Psh, psh. They went into people's cars and it appeared with them, the gangsters and they, all right, took out the batteries. When I heard that, I nearly got psychotic. The next night I told them, any man touch a battery neck tonight, the fingers would melt. They never touch after that. Are you hearing me, brethren? But I'm watching a guy. I'm watching a guy in the corner. And I realize he's one of the guys. But every night he come into the altar. Every night he come into the altar. So hear what happened now. One night, one night, he came to see me after. He said, Pastor, would you come in the garrison to see me? Or you're scared? I said, I ain't the garrison in Trinidad all the time. I am a garrisonologist. You understand? So therefore, where the tent was, the other girl, when I stand there, they would scale the tent. He right there, and I see a lady with a, with, a, with a baby that was his child outside of wedlock. I didn't know that guy had some brothers and an uncle, all of them in jail for murder. Lord have mercy. So he came to me. But I realized when I'm making the call for baptism now, the boy ain't moving at all. For three weeks, the guy coming up to the altar. When I made a call for baptism now, the boy not coming up. So after I told him, I said, I'm coming by you tomorrow. All the brethren said, I get concerned. They say, Pastor, you can't go in there alone, you know. I said, this in Trinidad. I said, Trinidad bad too. <laughs> Have mercy. Can't go there alone. I said, okay, want to take me? I will go with you. So I went to the house. Let me tell you something. Huh? When God places his eyes on you, you can't get away, sir, you know, brethren. I don't care what life you have lived. I'm talking to the world now. On YouTube, I'm talking to the world. I don't care who you are and where you came from and what sins you have committed. God says if you come to him, him that cometh to me, I will know why it's cast out. And I realized something wrong. The Spirit of God showed me something. So that guy is guilt on him. He wouldn't come up to the altar. I went in the garrison. The garrison was awesome and fearsome. Fella drive me there. One big fella drive me there. But I didn't really need him. I had the angels with me. But in case, you know, something happened, the fellas say, I'm too bold faced and I'm too brave. So he living with this girl. What is it living? It's a, it's a little ghetto area with different houses. The wife to be, the mother of his child, told him, Pastor Dottin Thirsty, we have nothing in the house, we poor, you go in the shop. You go in the shop and you tell him, have mercy, and you buy something for the pastor. Don't leave him here thirsty. Next thing you drop down on the pulpit and they say, is, is, you know, we to blame. So I went, ladies and gentlemen, I went in the house. The lady, the lady had the power of God. She lived in common law, but she had the power of God. You know, some people just wise. They're just perceptive. They have the gift, my dear friends, of perception. So hear what happened now. I there have mercy in the name of Jesus. I am right there. And when I'm right there, the girl told me, I sent him in the shop to tell you something. I said, you said, to buy juice for me in truth? She said, yes, you get in the juice, but I see destruction. He said, last year, my husband committed murder. He committed murder, all right? And he felt God has not forgiven him. His uncle committed murder. His brothers committed murder. And he feels God has not forgiven him. And that is why he's not coming out. I said, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So he came from the shop. They bring some nice orange juice for me. Man, I drink it fast. I was thirsty in truth. So I fixed it up one time. When preachers thirsty, they must drink. Have mercy. Well, I said, son, this time the girl disappeared. The common law wife, she disappeared. She was a wise woman. She gave me adequate space to deal with him. He said, Pastor, last year, October, I commit murder. And I believe that's why I'm not going to get baptized. That God has not forgiven me. I said, let me tell you something. If we confess our sins, 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let me tell you something there. Man, I preached a sermon for 20 minutes to him there. I said, what happened? What sin you committed? What sin you committed? Tell me what sin you committed. He said, Pastor, I committed murder last year. I said, don't worry that man. I, I know where I am in the garrison. That's what it's all about. It's committing murder and drugs. I understand that. But God... 
I say, I see Jesus in you. I see when we sing in the song, uh, he loved the song. Uh, There's a fountain filled with blood uh, drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Uh, and sinners plunge beneath that flood. Uh, lose all their guilty stains. Uh, man, I'm watching that. I'm watching that. And, uh, you know, in the man house, I'm jumping up and thinking, you know, I, I know where this thing going. Uh, I know where it's supposed to go. And the Holy Ghost told me that he was working at the guy. Hello, before you witness for Christ, uh, you must ensure the Holy Ghost is inside of you. Giving that sense of analysis and perception. Uh, uh, and I told him, I said, son, if you love Jesus, uh, don't care what this sin is. You know, we have big sin and small sin. You know, it's on my the church. I'm already preaching. Sin is sin. Did I hear you say hey, amen? I hear a fellow talking on the media. If you steal a thousand dollars or steal a million, sin is sin. It's as simple as that. I say, son, you did what you did. You didn't have the power of God in you. Uh, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, uh, they are called the sons of God. Uh, there is no, no, no condemnation to them uh, who walk not after the flesh, uh, but walk after the Spirit. Uh, for the law of the Spirit of life, uh, Romans 8, 2, had made me free from the law, sin and of death. Come on, uh, that's the power of God. And I told that guy uh, that tonight uh, God is going to save him. Uh, tonight God is going to bless him. Uh, and then he told me something. You know when I counsel addicts and murderers and prostitutes? I take a trip up memory lane. All them UV psychologists and them have to humble. I take a trip and I find out what is the shattered dream. That's where I start to counsel. It works, I'm telling you, with supernatural power. I say, son, what do you want to be? What is your goal in life? Because you're going to get baptized, all right? I told him that. i talking for him, you know. I say, you're going to get baptized, all right? After I don't tell him what you're going to do, I ask him if I'm right. You see? Mm-hmm. I didn't ask him if he's going to get baptized. I said, you're going to get baptized. Are you right? He said, I'll show you that. I said, you want to get baptized. Am I talking the truth? Don't lie for me right now. He said, Pastor, from the first night you preach, I want to get baptized. Uh, this murderer, this assassin uh, is facing me right now uh, from a psychotic family of assassins. Uh, and he said, Pastor, Pastor, and he started to cry. This big murderer started to cry because the power of God was working. Uh, it is no secret uh, what my God can do, what he has done for others. Uh, he will do for you. You know the baptismal site? Went by a pool in Jamaica there. He come to me after, he said, Pastor, it was my dream. My dream is to become a minister. And how God is awesome. The Northern Caribbean University from Mandeville came down the next Sabbath. And he told the guy, the head of the theology department, I don't only want to give my heart to Jesus to get baptized, but God is calling me to be a minister. Hello, let me tell you something. Uh, the woman at the well was a prostitute, and she became a missionary the same day. We set barriers and say after six months, we're going to get to office, and after a year, and we have to test and prove. We can't test and prove nothing. Are you hearing me, Brother Ringer? Is the Holy of Ghost to, re- to, to show us that, Brother Ringer, to demonstrate the genuineness, the authenticity of a person's uh, alleged change? It is owned by the power of the Holy Ghost. We could see what nobody else can see who not under the power of the Holy Ghost. And I tell you tonight, all to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. Somebody watching uh, from America, from Japan, uh, from China, from Nigeria, from Brazil, uh, from Jamaica, Antigua, Virgin Islands, Trinidad, uh, from Barbados, uh, uh, from Alaska, uh, from France, from Portugal, uh, somebody from Cyprus uh, and Iran uh, and Israel. Somebody is uh, listening to the word uh, and you want to change. uh, Just say, I surrender all to you, Jesus. Uh, Listen to the words of the song. uh, All to Jesus, I surrender. Uh, 20 past 8. Hallelujah. Praise God. Sing that song. Folks in the audience, a few of you in the audience, let's, let's stand, the technicians, uh, cabinet officials. All to Jesus. There's a card. There's a card, an electronic card. Sign that card tonight. Sign that card tonight. There's a card. Put your name, your address. Like the guy in Jamaica. Like Gatsi Morata, like Asia BB, Liberty Ambassadors, you want to surrender all to Jesus. You want to give your heart to Jesus. You have an appetite for the law of God, for the Sabbath of God. You have an appetite tonight for that. Just sign that card. Because God is calling you. God wants to save you. God wants to bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will give you victory over sin. Victory over lying and stealing. He will give you the victory. In the name of Jesus. 
power in his name to sing the last verse for us. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, to Jesus. All to Jesus. Oh, yes. Take that electronic card. The Holy Ghost is upon you. Pray for the Holy Ghost. Oh, the joy, oh, the joy of full salvation. Oh, salvation. Glory. 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 By the power of God, we surrender all. Praise the Lord. All to thee, my blessed Savior. At day 25. Bow your heads with me and close your eyes. Put your right hand on your left breast. Father, come into our hearts tonight. Lord, I pray for these people all over the world. Every day around 9 o'clock, we see over 2,000 people have viewed this service. Lord, may many of them surrender to you. Pray for the Holy Ghost. To change their hunger and their thirst. May they hunger and thirst, oh God, not after horror movies, not after parties and pets, not after the LGBTIQ agenda. May they hunger and thirst, oh God, after righteousness, after truth, after purity. Oh God, I'm going to realize uh, that true freedom comes from Jesus Christ because it's the power of God that liberates us from the slavery and incarceration uh, of the evil one. Uh, the occultic powers. Oh Lord, bring conviction to those looking all around the world. Help them to realize that when a son of the sun had set us free, we are free indeed. May they realize what the psalmist David says. I once was young, but now I'm old, and I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Oh God, give them a change of mind. Grant them the metanoia. When Peter preached that gospel under the influence of the Holy Ghost, men and women and children, thousands of them experienced the metanoia, the saving grace, the transforming power, the changing power, because we know the Holy Ghost is the greatest change agent. Lord, 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 you dealt with a woman at the well and she was changed. You gave Caleb and power the courage over psychotic men, barbaric men. You said we were well able. May we realize with you in our hearts and the word of God in our minds, we can accomplish all things. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And so until tomorrow night, uh, have faith in God. Uh, Jesus is your best friend. Have faith in God. Uh, he will love you till the end. Uh, have faith in God. He saved you by his grace. Uh, have faith in God. Uh, one day we shall see him face to face. Uh, have faith, dear friend, in God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Wow, wow, what another powerful message from Pastor Dutton. Pastor Dutton, we thank you again for reminding us that through God we are saved and that God has all the power. Do not let the trick of the devil and the stumbling blocks and the defenses that men may put in your place challenge you or sway your trust and faith in God. Have faith in God. Let it build that trust and faith that you have in God. For all of you online, remember to fill the online card. Thank you so